Would you like to come on camera? No, and I would not. I would like you uh, off the okay. off our property right now. I'd like you to stop taking my picture. Hey, hey, picture. excuse me. Take the pic. Take your. Hey, pic hey, 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 hey. Hey, don't take your rebel crap you want... news out of here right now. Why is it rebel crap news, sir? Get out off our private property. I'll call the police. Last week, we showed you some truly awful images of how some homeless people in Toronto are coping with the frigid wintertime conditions, including sleeping in fields and camping out under the elevated Gardner Expressway, given that the homeless population in Toronto is almost 9,000, the shelters are jam-packed, there is literally no room at the inn. But when it comes to the so-called irregular, aka illegal, arrivals to Canada, well, an entirely different scenario plays out. Namely, those non-citizens who have entered into Canada mostly from Africa, the Middle East, and Haiti, and have done so in an illegal basis, are put up in hotels. Case in point, the Radisson Toronto East is now entirely and exclusively reserved for refugees and asylum seekers. And unlike the cold and hunger the domestic homeless must endure on a cold day in February, well, there's no such concern here, thanks to central heating and three square meals a day, courtesy of you, the taxpayer. So how bad will this problem get? Well, consider that there are currently more than 64,000 asylum seekers waiting for their cases to be heard. And that's a number that grows weekly, thanks to more illegals coming into Canada at those so-called irregular border crossings. And of course, Immigration Minister Ahmad Hussein has signed on to the UN Global Compact. And according to the United Nations, there are currently 258 million migrants the world over. So clearly, the supply of irregulars for Canadian hotels to house is just about limitless. Oh, I don't know. Is this your, we're on the yeah, parking lot? No okay. It's private property. Please get off. Oh, okay then. Would you like to come on camera? No, I would not. I would like you uh, off the okay. off our property right now. I'd like you to stop taking my picture. Hey, hey, excuse camera. me. Take the pic. Take your Hey, 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 hey. 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 Don't take your rebel crap you want... news out of here right now. Why is it rebel crap news, sir? Get out off our private property. I'll call the police. Good. And then you'll be charged with assault for what you just did. Yeah. Well, that was interesting. Well, as you just witnessed, folks, for no apparent reason, my cameraman Efren was manhandled, my microphone was grabbed, we were called expletive words, and, uh, you know, I, it's kind of funny, because I always thought the Radisson chain was all about the hospitality business. That was quite an inhospitable greeting. Uh, but I guess when it comes to the refugee business, uh, it is the takers that are welcomed, not the makers. As various hotels in the greater Toronto area swell with refugee claimants, yet more space is needed. And it was recently reported in the Toronto Sun that city shelter officials have squirreled away some $3 million in the 2019 budget in order to secure this building here at 5800 Young Street in North Toronto to house yet more refugees. Greg Saraganian, a spokesman for the city's shelter support and housing department, says this building will be used if the influx of refugees increases at a, quote, rate which cannot be accommodated through other programs, end quote. And given the number of asylum seekers that are headed into the greater Toronto area, I think it is a safe bet to say, folks, that this building will indeed be the next shelter for Toronto's increasing number of irregulars. And it is the taxpayer, of course, who is paying for this accommodation. Indeed, the City of Toronto spent more than $67 million in 2017 and 2018 to feed, house, and provide minimal support to refugees. And the city says it needs an additional $45 million in stable funding from the Trudeau Liberals this year alone just to manage the expected influx. Well, here we are at another Toronto hotel that is off limits to paying customers, the Toronto Plaza Hotel. This property is home to about 500 people and it's been 
closed to the public for a few years now. Granted, this hotel has seen far better days, but for those residing within it, the Toronto Plaza surely resembles the Ritz-Carlton compared to Toronto's domestic homeless, some of whom now have to live under the Gardner Expressway. There is, of course, a cost to the taxpayer when it comes to providing room and board on such a large scale. Last year, it was reported that the city signed at least $4.5 million in contracts with alternative living solutions to house and feed those staying at this 199-room hotel. But it should also be noted that it was reported last year that the City of Toronto was actually considering buying this property outright. And the current market value for this hotel, $35 million. And that's a figure that would no doubt balloon given the renovations that are much needed and must be done here. Indeed, some of the rooms at the Toronto Plaza are closed off due to mold reasons. So the question arises in the months or years ahead, how big of a sinkhole will the Toronto Plaza become for Hogtown's beleaguered taxpayers? And still, it doesn't seem right now, does it, folks? So many Canadians are struggling just to get by and make ends meet, yet Justin Trudeau's refugees, well, they are given what amounts to the royal treatment. But welcome to 2019 Canada, one that favours the takers over the makers. For the Rebel Daunt Media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Say, folks, have you heard you can listen to all Rebel shows as a podcast? Simply go to the Rebel Daunt Media slash listen.